So we're going to do some retopo topo, and this comes from one of the viewers of the channel. They are trying to retopologize something, and they're not sure if they're doing it quite right. And they're confused about whether their, their topology is correct. So what we're going to do here is start with the uh, snake hook tool. I've turned it to projector to grab through it. This also isn't going to be like a step-by-step -step tutorial necessarily. It's more about just discussing like a big idea of things. So. I'm just going to work out the shape here real quick. The goal with this one, anyways, is to make something like a bone, like an artificial bone. And like a hip or something. So we have something kind of interesting to work on. I'll see how that goes. We use the scrape tool. And scrape off this back section over here. Okay, we'll scrape down this side. Let's do a little sculpting so we have something to retopo, basically. Something like that, maybe. Scrape this side too, remesh it as needed. It's interesting. I made it a little too thin, I think. All right. You use the grab tool, snake hook, or even mask and whatnot. You set it to project it, it grabs through the mesh. Okay. This is actually way more useful than you realize. Because basically what's going to happen is later on you can, um, let's say like we inflate the top a little bit here at the this side. Yeah, smooth it down a little. All right. Want the back side flat, so we'll scrape that again too. Let me turn that wireframe off so we can see what we're doing. I'm gonna remesh higher. It's still very low poly. We can definitely take it up. Get a nicer, smoother result out of it, anyways. Okay. You can use things like the crease tool. I like to use it with sharper and spacing to one. Blender 4.3 is going to update these sculpt tools so that they're in the asset browser and they're going to introduce some useful new kind of setups that some of them have already gone over on the channel, like the flatten tool. I think if you set flatten or scrape tool to normal and plain, it can be quite useful. They're going to have at least the flatten tool doing this where it's going to, they're going to call it the plateau brush. And all of the sculpting tools will have, a well, I think most of them will have a uh, performance increase. It's minimal, but it's definitely useful. Turn that low strength so we can kind of nudge into there a little bit. But yeah, the mask tool, let's get to it. That was what I wanted to do. Full strength projected. Set the size you want. And you can cut across something like that, right? Or if you wanted to go like straight down the middle here, I've got symmetry on, so it's easy. We could do something like that. We'll get both sides. See? So if we press A, mask menu, invert, you can deflate. Set to inflate by default, but it works both ways, right? Okay. So now we have that going, and I still ain't entirely convinced on this shape here. I think it should be a little bit different. Let's just try scraping through here. On the edge. You gotta be careful with the scraper because it will dig holes. We'll find that out very quickly. As you use it, right? why I think low strength on it works best but big single strokes low strength um, works well right so our little hip section is starting to go the mask tool turn that projected off and we can come in here and create a selection we can inflate this area maybe a little bit let's chisel it up 
make it a little bit nicer looking. Okay. So this is hard surface modeling or sculpting anyways. You can mix in booleans with this process and use the voxels as well at the same time. It's quite fun. Works out really well. And you can do other fun things too, like if you were to grab the mask tool again, set it back up. Like we can go through here. Blender doesn't handle high polygon counts really that well, so it's not like a ZBrush replacement necessarily. But you can definitely create reference mesh. Like you can create this as like a base that you might want to um, retop a later on. No problem. You're just going to have to spend the time retopping it, but you can definitely work out the designs very fast this way, which is really good, in my opinion. You see, we got most of what we want, right? If we do any more, it probably wouldn't look quite right. It's going to work that and smooth it a little bit extra. Sometimes it won't smooth right. You see, like, no matter how hard I try, it just kind of goes back to the way it was. A lot of times, you're going to find that you want to remesh it and then smooth it. Okay, so just control R, then smooth. See how it goes. All right, and that's that one. Let's just add some more kind of sci fi real quick to it. We'll use the uh, mask right on this edge here. Also, sometimes if you're using a graphics tablet like I am, just turn off. Stabilize stroke on, turn both of these down. It's going to smooth it out a tiny bit. So your strokes will look a little nicer. Not perfect, but a little bit nicer. So we can keep using that inflate all day long like this. We can also use the layer tool if we wanted to. It's really up to us on what we're going for. I don't think that looks that good, but the idea was seemed better, I think, than what I ended up creating. So we'll try to mask it out. Oh, before we do that, mask it out, make it thinner. I wanted to push it in just a tiny little bit in this area, and it was too large. So let's try that again. Yeah, something like that. You can see we're running out of resolution for that kind of detail. So we might be just better off modeling it in later on instead of trying to sculpt it in. So sometimes you got to question what you're doing and if it's going to work for you or not. Yeah, I don't think that one's going to work out. All right, we'll give up on that one then. Just clear the mask. And let's see if we can make this more interesting somehow. It feels very boring to me. Let's just do a big mask all the way through. Like this. I really want it straighter than that. We could use a line tool to use a different stroke. Use line. And it's Alt E or E to change the stroke or just go up the stroke, right? Yeah, something like this is fun. Invert it. All I'm going to do is sculpt into it a little bit until I get it to about the same level here. Smooth it a bit. Now we can use that. Flatten tool, right? Find the dead center of it. Smooth it a bit. Find the dead center. Let's see if we can't get the right normal here to flatten all that out. Because you can see like it's going from this side to this side a little. And so we have to find that balance manually. But once we find it, we can use the flatten tool and just go to town. In this area. Flatten it all down. All right, keep hitting the uh, stylus button by accident. Whoops. Okay, you can see it pulled all the way through to that side. Let's do front faces only. That's usually what causes that. Make sure we don't do that again. Blender likes to pull mesh through mesh. 
Yeah, so pretty interesting, I would say, overall. It's not, like, the greatest of designs, but it's, it's fun, right? Like, that's the main idea. We're just trying to have a little bit of fun here. Like, if I use the Sculpt Draw tool and I make a little bubble here on this side, right? Maybe we can smooth that out. Um, but let's just make, like, a better bubble than that. That was a little bit off. Make it a little bit larger than we probably should. Now we use the scraper. We just flatten it down and it should be close to a circle. Something like that, maybe. Just keep flattening it for a bit. If you gotta make a, a larger brush to do that, then do it. I don't like what happened at the bottom though. Not too large. Yeah, so if you want to use a crease tool, just crease it up. Yeah, so hard surface sculpting in Blender, not what you probably thought it was. You can do this at a high enough resolution. You can bake from these things. Like this one would actually probably work for the most part, except for a few discrepancies, if it was a higher resolution. You can see with Shade Smooth, if it was a... A little higher resolution. I, I don't like recording when it's too high. Because it messes up the audio recording. But I could definitely take these meshes up to a couple million. It's not really a big deal. And I probably could just use this as a high poly and bake from it. So if you ever wonder about that, that's true. You can do that. It's nothing too crazy. I'm going to sharpen it up in here a little. Okay, I don't want to get too carried away because that flatten tool works in both directions. If you had just the scrapers set as normal and plain, it will only scrape. It will not fill. So it never, you never have to worry about it doing kind of the wrong things. And also, I don't want that effect anyways where it turns into like a pill. I just want it to be a little bit nicer in there. We got to turn that back off. Just gonna flatten it here a little. It's very lightly doing this, very little strength. Trying to get those to blend. All right. So another little note here: the smooth tool. If you use it full strength for a second and work in one area, you'll notice it starts flattening the surface. Okay. And the smooth tool is a flattened tool. It's a Laplacian smooth, so it actually kind of flattens the average normal of the what's under the brush. So you can do things like that as well. It's harder to do it on dense mesh, but it works well on simpler mesh. So you can see how that all worked out. All right. Like I was saying, if you really wanted to bake this thing, like you could, no problem. So this is something like an artificial hip. It's like a um, titanium hip kind of idea if you want to look those things up a lot of uh, artificial bones prosthetics things like that are great for like biomech type of inspiration you can see here but we want to maybe use this not like this right like we want to retop it now we're just going to go through and do subdivision modeling more or less so we just create a plane turn on snapping use face project projection snapping i forgot what they call it in blender 4 it's, they gave it a new little section. It's all pretty much set up, ready to go for you in Blender 4. And then uh, in edit mode, you'll get a new drop down in 4 here in 3.6, retopo right there. And turn on the retopology shading. So you can scale that. Oh, go into edit mode with it, right? Scale it smaller, move it. It snaps to the surface. This is a symmetrical object, so we'll be a little bit faster because we're only doing half of this model. Uh, asymmetry is going to be a lot harder to work with. So I do recommend practicing working with asymmetrical things. But for the most part, you can see kind of our, our ball joint's not too spherical, is it? Anyways, but for the most part, we're just going to go through and do this as if we were doing regular uh, subdivision modeling. We're just snapping to the surface. That's the big difference here. Now for hard surface, it 
can be useful a lot of times to, well, when you're doing retopo in general, it can be useful to have a shrink wrap after you do the retopo, you do like a subdivision level and then you might shrink wrap it. You can still do that, but for hard surface, a lot of times it's not as useful as you think um, because it just tends to like pile up the geo, the retopo geo into like weird areas in the mesh. It doesn't always work out the way you expect it to. So a trick to this is, you can see I'm just filling that real quick. The, uh, the trick to this though, is that you, you want to use a high enough resolution where it's not too hard to work with, but it's also not, um, going to lose too much volume when you're, you're doing this. And so it's a little bit of a balancing act. You'll have to get the hang of it, I think, but you can definitely do this all day long. Make cool stuff very fast sculpting it. Don't even think about topology. And then go back and just start working it out. Also, you're not going to do holding edges yet. There's no reason to do the holding edges because you can go back and bevel them in or use like a weighted bevel or whatever you want to make that happen. And the goal here is just to create, for the most part, good quad topology. Now, Good quad topology usually means like perfect little squares everywhere. You can see we got like fluctuations happening here between shapes. So it's not necessarily the greatest topology right now. But hard surface sometimes can be like that too. It's just something that naturally occurs or kind of wants to occur. It's really hard to balance it. Uh, perfect like if, you know, you're not going for perfect mesh, like you're doing baking mesh. Like you're just cleaning this up so you can bake from it. Don't worry about perfect topo. It's not really worth it. There's, a, there's always like a um, a time and a place for how you work with geometry, right? Like if you're going to create subdivision mesh that needs to be absolutely perfect, then you know you do that when it's appropriate. But if you don't have to, you're going to waste a lot of time. Don't do it. Just make it well enough. You can see here, like we're not quite high enough resolution back here, but because of the way the front is, we should be able to just send like loop cuts through and things like that. When you gotta be careful though, when doing things like that, cause sometimes it shifts things around. If you GG twice or loop cut, it might mess things up. But now this is unbalanced from down here. So we'd have to have another loop cut down here. See where that's going. And then we have to re-space all this out more appropriately. So I'm going to skip this for now. We're not going to do that just yet. I'm going to see if we can't work something out in this area, but you got to be careful with stuff like that. Keeping it simpler, honestly, is probably your better option. Anytime you can make something simpler, just do it. And uh, you can worry about finer details later on, perhaps, because you could take this up a level of subdivision, shrink wrap it. If it's really simple, it'll shrink wrap well still. It won't be too bad. And then you can worry about all that extra. As long as you're not creating big flat places, usually you're okay. And we're going to take this edge to here. Now we're down to there. Just got to figure it out, right? And that's always the trick with subdivision too. Like when you're trying to create this kind of topology, it's always a game of, you know, figure out what works best in this situation. And as you do it more, you just get a, a better handle on it and what's happening or occurring. So like, we definitely need more topo. I can't get away from it every time I try to work something out. It's just not happening. We can do extremely exaggerated too, like we are right now. Not the end of the world, but you definitely are going to have to at some point like realize that you like if you need more topo, you need it. And that's one of the most annoying things I think is that like, as you work on this, you're going to find that a lot of times you just didn't get something right. And you kind of go, go back and kind of fix things or change them around a little bit so that they work out better. And, um, it's not always the most pleasant of experiences. It's like something like this. I don't want to space all this stuff, right? So go to sculpt mode forward slash to isolate. You can try using the slide relax tool 
hold shift. You can try slide relaxing as well. Maybe turn the strength down a little bit on that one though. It should try to preserve the volume. I'm not guaranteeing this worked um, very well, but it did move them around a little bit, right? So forward slash, go back to sculpt mode or edit mode. You can see it moves them around a little bit. There's things like that you can do. Sometimes you can scale things and then just move it a little to snap it back to the surface. And maybe control V, smooth vertices a little bit, hit shift R if needed, and then move it a little. There's little things like that you can do to help spacing sometimes. Get it going. You can see that didn't work out too well in this area. All right, it's going to change the form there quite a bit. Still too low res. Yeah, it happens. All right, so another thing you could also try doing is just isolating something and applying a, a subdivision to it and then shrink wrapping it back, just that piece. So you think like right here, all of this, you do select a loop in a region when you do that. Like maybe we separate it just temporarily. Right, and then now we're like, you know what, let's just subdivide this and then we'll use the shrink wrap modifier. We'll pick our target and we can set it to project it if we want, set it to positive and negative, and we could try doing like above surface, outside surface, or whatever the case. And we can see here, like, we can't up res this very easily and shrink wrap it back to the surface there. It's not the end of the world to do that but that once you add more geo it means you got a lot more work to do potentially uh, when you do stuff like that right so i prefer kind of creeping up to my counts not usually doing things like that too much occasionally you have to but i'm gonna undo that actually all the way back to where they're connected i'd rather just do it manually than this one okay and so that should work out pretty well for the time being. We'll just keep moving and see what we can get into. It's like this is obviously going to be higher density in here. And uh, these ones will just shift around real quick. Won't be the end of the world because we got to add that one back here probably. I really want it running maybe from here. Just cut that one. That's going to give us another edge on this side, possibly, unless we send it down. Yeah, so little things like that, right? This should be in the center of that shape. Yeah, just keep it simple as you can. You know, can you always? No. but. Try, you know, try to make it the best you can, simple as you can. It'll tend to work out better that way. Like this one can be a little quad right here. Remember the three edges to hold a curve, right? That whole nonsense. Put that one there. Sometimes I just run the wires the way I want them. And then I'll do the face later. I don't, I don't look at this as anything but edges for the most part, vertices, faces are kind of an afterthought in some ways. I got used to modeling with triangles early on, so it was um, one of those things. Game models like triangles to shade correctly, right? So if you make this well enough, you could almost probably grid fill it. Try changing the segment count. Yeah. You see that pretty much works out, except it's not on the surface. So I'll just press G, snap it down. It's pretty close. And we'll bring these ones in a little bit like that. Another edge through here would definitely be better, I think. Okay. 
All right. We'll send that one that way a little bit. We'll space these out a little bit more. It's easy to lose an edge, too, if you're trying to keep something straight. So you definitely got to be a little bit picky with what you're doing. I'm not going to fill into that hole yes, just yet, that crevice. Tapered area, whatever you want to call it. You can see the top's a big edge. Down here is not. This could throw us for a loop. I don't think it'll be too bad, but it might. Just got to figure it out as we go, right? So there we go. And forward. What's this have? Two at the top, so we'll do two on the bottom. Two edges, right? Yeah. So we should be good with something more like this, I think. I might be wrong too. I mean, there's a good odd chance I'm wrong. I get things wrong all the time. I don't always know for sure what's going to happen, how it's going to work out. Like this here, like sometimes you, you need to use triangles still. Like that's collapsing down like that. I think that's a great place for a triangle. This is going to be a tri quad. Although I don't suspect it's going to bend right here in the back because there's a little um, end pole that we've created. But it could be okay, maybe. Those. There's definitely, I think there's something more we can do in this area that would work out better. But I'm going to try doing it like this. Okay. And so these scare people, like these triangles, like using triangles or these uh, tri quads. They're basically the same thing. Like this is what happens if you subdivide a triangle. Okay. But this is also like an inset. So when you watch those topology fundamental videos I did and all that, when we look at this and it subdivides, we look at the optimal display off. This looks exactly like an inset here. Okay. Um, this is rather scary looking. That E pole is definitely problematic. But the main idea is that you can use things like that. And so we've created the e-pole. This is our problem we've generated. Once you create an e-pole or an in-pole, it's going to remain with a subdivision mesh until the end. We'd be better off doing something like this. So now when we subdivide this later on, look at it with the optimal display off. Okay, why well, we're not seeing the result here. There you go. This is going to be much cleaner. That's still, yeah, pinch in there. I don't think it would be the end of the world, but C pole should work out okay. You're trying to avoid creating too many of these things, right? Only when necessary. And that's what makes good topology, is just controlling your mesh, understanding like what's happening when and where and all that. And if it needs animation, you know, you avoid problematic mesh, right? Right, so there we go. That one, mostly okay. We'll just keep working this shape down now. Um, seems like a lot left to do, but it's really not. This area is pretty simple. It's just a lot of just straight runs. It's really these like intricate kind of sections that'll toss you for a loop. And it's one of those things that you just got to get used to practicing, like working things in big sections or chunks. Sometimes this is, this is a definite, definite speed increase when you can start doing things in big parts, basically. Right. Instead of like doing each edge, I just like to get kind of finicky with it sometimes and do each edge like that. But it's definitely when you're doing more simplified kind of geo, you know, push it, like to the extreme there, I guess, as far as like extruding multiple edges or vertices or whatever. So, you know, just take it all down slightly to the right on that one so we symmetrize. And then like this stuff, like more than likely, this one we could just place here, that there. And then so it looks like these ones are going to come down, right? Yeah, so this is where it gets fun in my opinion. 
where retopo doesn't seem like such a daunting meaningless task is that you can just start running things and set like a density going down like i'm not doing perfect squares but i'm doing kind of longer stretches to keep the count lower you don't even have to do these necessarily in, at like this entirely but you can see how it works out right it's way easier than you probably thought Like you can pull that whole thing down, place this center vert, and then just move that one back, move this one down maybe. You can do stuff like that too. Let's see how that works out. This is going to be like a single apparently. Do that. And so you can see like the other edges over here. We kind of want to mimic what's happening over there. So like one, two, you see? So we just kind of, it's easy to lose count. Let's just put it, let's be honest. It's easy to lose count. Um, Sometimes just going for it and then just fixing the count later is a better way to go. I think I'm doing like every other one right now. We'll see how that works out. But we'll combine them together at some point. You can always straighten things later on if they're slightly bent. Um, using machine tools add on, you can just all A straighten. You can see it flattens everything out possibility or you'll just have to manually tweak them a bit all right and so that section's mostly there i'm mostly worried about down here this is what's concerning me still because i know we can make anything in the middle meet up for the most part this i'm not so sure about like how many segments we're going to need to make everything work but um, by the looks of it i think we'll be okay -ish. yeah i'm gonna pull this up that and for this one i really want to do this but i also want this to flatten out down here it's a little tricky on this one so we'll try this instead we'll see how that works out i don't know if that's going to be the answer though I feel like there's still something wrong with that solution there. So our flow's doing this, but then this one does that. Hmm. Not sure about that one. And we got to combine all this in here as well. So that means we're going to have to have about uh, three, three on top here. Sometimes I like to just remind myself what I need. I'll just duplicate a vert. Go through, fill them oh, one at a time, apparently. Yeah, so just place three there up top. Should be about right. This one should now be able to run to there. I'll become a face, face. This will become an edge. Yeah, I think we about have the right setup here. It looks like we do. We need three down here as well. We've already got one. There's two. There's three. You see? Little things like that go a long way. If you want this to be a perfect circle, you can run loop tool circle as well. And then just place it accordingly. Pretty sweet of a process, anyways. What do we got over here? We got three on this side, too. Yeah, we do, don't we? One, two, three. I think that's what we need. Space these out a little better. Yeah, so we can do the verts and fill right like that. Don't always have to do edges. We'll send these ones down real quick. I'm pretty sure we're good here, so we probably start building this out. Let's just fill that to there. 
All right, now here's the trick with this. Okay, I'm gonna run loop tools from the side, set it to a circle, rotate it into position, move it where it needs to go, scale it a little. If we need to tweak this later on, we can. Okay, that's the main idea. I'm gonna press E and S, E S merge at center, Control X dissolve that, so we have an end gun. Now the reason is is so when I do loop cuts, they don't run through it because that can sometimes create a big spiral around your mesh. Not a good thing sometimes. Might be better to just do it like that. And this one we can shift around a little. Okay. And we'll do that for that. Still gotta do this back side apparently. We're getting a little bit pushy here with these things, We're stretching them out pretty weird. In different areas it's not necessarily a great thing to do but it's a doable thing but it's not a great thing to do i think also since the other side is that way i'm gonna just go ahead and um, extrude these out right here send it all the way over fill there now we should be able to symmetrize like this yep use the mesh machine there Yeah, so this process, a lot of people really hate it. I, I don't mind it because I know at the end of this, I'm going to have more or less the result I want. I'm not going to sit here and, you know, think like, oh, can I make this kind of topo or this mesh? Or, no, I know subdivision. I know how to get in here and start modeling. I can make things happen, basically. And so, like, if I fill here and I fill here, I fill all the way up. And I do a loop cut right down the middle. Press G. Move it. It'll snap to the back there. Here. We have this result right now. This could be that crazy quad like that if you wanted to. But you can see it doesn't match this side. This side's more like this. Not the end of the world to do some goofy things sometimes. But I think we'd be better off not doing that. Convert this one, we'll join there, we'll cut. We'll do that instead. Move it, mirror it, right? Boom. And so that one little push to the middle probably isn't enough either. Um, the trick with this one, when you see that occurring, we have basically an inset section here going on. We can control and shift click through there. Um, we could realign the edges if needed, but we could literally just inset this. Or you can press E and then S, and we can scale it into position. And because snapping's turned on right now, what ends up happening is it just kind of moves to where it needs to go. Okay. And so we end up with that result. Very simple of a process. It's just inside right? But now we have, last but not least, this section over here. And is that the last one? No, we got to do this side too, huh? This got moved somehow. We'll move it back. This side here, we'll do the same thing, kind of, but at a different order. We're going to do uh, E, S, S, and then X. It'll snap to the bottom there, you see? And so now, I'm going to grab these two. I'm just going to start filling to the top. It should line up, hopefully. should be evenly spaced. All right. Loop cut. Fill, fill. All right. What about the bottom here? Is that good? Oh, it is. Fill. Look at that. We've made it happen. It's that fast. This one, you're not going to be able to do that quite the same. You could do like half this shape that way, probably, though, which is kind of fun. So if we just control click through here. That top we're going to have to rework if we do this. The bottom we would have to as well. So we just press E and S, scale it in. S and then uh, Y if needed. This has a little bit of a curve to it, so we're messing the curve up slightly, but it won't be the end of the world. Yeah, you see how these ones like started to go upwards? I don't know if I like that idea. So there's a little trick to this one as well. You can shift right click somewhere, use the 3D cursor as your pivot point, right? 
or you transform possibly. Um, but if we press E and S, you see everything scales towards that pivot point now, the 3D cursor, I mean. So um, E, S, scale it in a little, S, Y, you can see they don't go up as far now, right? So yeah, use a 3D cursor when needed, guys. It's there for you, for you to use, right? And because of that reason, we now have pretty evenly spaced edges here. And it actually worked out better than I thought it was going to. I'll add a loop cut right here at the end and then attach that. If you did this well enough, these should almost match up perfectly, in which case they are very close. We didn't quite get it right, but um, it's very close anyway. So a little trick here is we probably could do like a redirect right here and send this out this way over this symmetry. This is why working with symmetrical objects is so good because when you run into a problem like this, you can always redirect over symmetry usually. Don't get too like lenient on it, like use it, over utilize it. But in this case, I'm just gonna use it right there. And you can see our object is now for the most part done. This one's gonna be easy. Should be able to just hit E, S, scale it in. Okay, hit S and Y, it doesn't work, right? So we'll just have to place one side and then the other side we can tweak if needed. See? That way we're not doing double of everything, basically. This one here also, uh, very similar of a process. Loop cut to there. We're going to fill. Loop cut, merge out. This one should be easy. It should be an E and an S, S and Y, or S and X in this case. And um, move it into position. You should be able to grid fill this one. If not, you don't have the right amount of vertices. <laughs> so we have something off here a little bit. Sometimes it just fails too. So let's just try doing it manually. I think we can get it to work. Almost positive. So loop cut down here at the bottom. This is correct at the bottom, but the top isn't. Right? Well, just merge that up. It is now. See, it's like grid fill sometimes fails for no reason, I think, but whatever. A lot of times it does that. Usually it means you have like odd number of vertices. It needs to be an even number of vertices. In some other cases, it just kind of does what it wants, I guess. But and this here i thought was done correctly what is going on that's none of that snapped in there just gonna press g and see if it snaps back in there okay it's, it is now so that's good All right, so now all you have to do at this point, right, is go back and add holding edges or bevels where you need them, or you could use maybe creases or weighted bevels. It's really up to you. It's, this is like your chance to make everything kind of happen here, right? I'm going to use a relax tool real quick to fix this area up a bit. For cylindrical shapes, curved shapes, um, spherical shapes, things like that, the balance of the quads is extremely important. Otherwise, it doesn't look right when it comes to like reflections and things like that. So you can see that works out a lot better. But if we have doubled up stuff, just dissolve it. We'll click it. We'll exit. All that fun stuff. So let's get out of um, retopo shading for now. I'd probably back it up at this point. Like turn snapping off and this would be my new mesh I work on for sure I wouldn't mess that original one up or the retopo also might be helpful to save your hip joint now and you see it should be more of a ball joint but whatever good enough for us
this is where you can go through and you're not done modeling like you're still subdivision modeling at the end of the day tweak things refine them make them look better straighten them up make sure that top is doing exactly what you want it's nice to keep it over the mesh sometimes though to make sure it's still doing correctly um but you can see like if we run a sharpen with hard ops it tries to get things right but usually it makes a lot of mistakes because it's such narrow angles it doesn't really figure this kind of stuff out and so you're better off just going through it in my opinion and just doing it manually just mark um, bevel weights if needed if you're going to use weighted bevels that's a possibility but the idea is to start adding all the holding edges you want and i feel like i lose a lot of control with that sometimes as well so i still like to do things manually quite a bit so just doing like regular bevels i know i'm in complete control still especially when i have the other mesh underneath it but like i can start tightening up edges at this point doing boundary selects by the way if you're just curious boundary loops and then you just bubble and uh, probably uh, you can use shapes of one and two segments set outer mitter to arc if you need to um, these kinds of like little loops like this usually very easy to do very fast that one goes all the way through and creates some kind of crazy nonsense through here so that one is not so easy to do apparently I think it is mostly correct, actually, as far as the edges, edge selections go, except this here. We would want to go through here. You probably don't want to bevel all of this. So I'm going to stop. No, actually, I kind of like the idea of beveling that, but I don't want to go to this edge, I think. Or maybe I do. I think I will actually. That was a good selection somehow. Yeah, I see. Like, we're going to bevel all the way up this way. I don't know if we need that edge, though. So. Yeah, I don't want to do this edge. I don't think it's going to help us. So, we're not going to do that one. Somehow it's selected all the way up to here. You see where good edge flow is super important. Goes up to there and dies because of the uh, end pole or whatever, which is okay. Somehow it still went all the way through here. This is already beveled. We don't need that beveled. Yeah, we selected a number of things in here we don't need apparently. As long as we got half of it right, we can bevel it. Won't be a big deal. This probably could be pushed in further down here, but we'll try beveling that and this. Let's make sure this side's good. Seems good. Wish me luck. All right, here we go. So clamp overlaps on right now. Oh, it was. I thought. Yeah, so if we bevel like this, you can see, for some reason, didn't I get rid of that selection or did I not? I did not. Okay. Yeah, we can bevel it like this, no problem. Some of them will want to go through and correct, though. In this case here, I think, I almost feel like this one, like we could end it right here if we wanted just doing something like that but i almost want to run it back through a little bit to like here i think that'll work out better actually so we'll we'll end it there for now these we can collapse into a pole if we really want them oh don't forget you have surface slide with machine tools on the modes by it adds a temporary shrink wrap so you can still move things without losing its surface area for the most part i mean it's, it might not do like everything perfect but for the most part it'll work and um so we'll be able to tweak some things if needed like this should be fairly good i think as far as that one's concerned we'll find out when i hit the subdivision turn it on again this section here i don't want it to be like a hard edge too hard of an edge anyways so i just do a like a chamfer like an inset like that it's going to create kind of a, a softer effect like this right 
So that's all I want there. I swear this piece popped back out again. Didn't it? Yeah, if something ever like that bothers you, like it just doesn't seem like it did right, don't feel afraid to like just keep modeling something, you know? If you want that a little bit different, you know, make it different. We'll do a bevel on that one. All right. Did I not bevel the bottom here? I did not. I guess it depends on how curved you want that in there. You don't have to bevel that like if you want it curved like that. You might inset it a little though. And do that. Let's see. As for the bevels, they're coming out here and nothing has occurred here. If you're not sure what to do, just bevel this. Right? Usually you can find what needs to happen, like that needs to merge there, maybe dissolve that. And then these just went crazy and all kinds of just merge them to where they were. If you got some extra in there, delete it. Slide things a little bit, maybe. Not the end of the world, right? Oh, let's uh mirror that before I forget which side we were working on. Symmetrize it. All right, so your final touches are these guys usually. If you wanted to make them quads, you just um, whoop, delete only the face, control F, grid fill it, set your count, set your offset, and uh, basically just get it going how you would want it. I think we'll go with that for now. So that would go over to there. That one should be fine. Sometimes you need to add a little extra edge on these as well, just in case, right? In that case, you see it messed up the center. So we'll delete out to there. Grab all that. Yes. Yes. Grid fill it again. Let's see how it subdivides now, if it's better. Okay, it's just not flat. So we can grab the whole thing. That's an easy fix. Use loop tools, flatten. Boom. And solve that. Add it back. Press E when you do a loop cut. E, F. And then do that. Boom. We'll have a perfectly flat little cylinder piece there. If we want to add more detail to this, of course, we can always do that. Um, if we do this all correctly, that needs to merge. For some reason it wasn't. If we do this all correctly, we have, we'll have a... A superb kind of like flawless mesh for the most part. And sometimes you got to old S things out, make little changes, you know, balance things. Still a possibility. In our case here, I just think sliding that one down will help a little. It's not really, I don't think it's even really needed. I think we could just get rid of the whole thing and do that. Okay. I think that'll work fine. Not a big deal. Yeah, so make corrections if you need to. All right. Shade it smooth. It's not even shade it smooth. It's how good it, the subdivision is. But um, sometimes things like this, you can try changing things up a little bit. It might give you more of a desired result. I don't think that pinch there's um it's terrible i don't think it's bad but i think just pulling it apart might also make it look a little nicer so sometimes you can get away with that balancing things in that manner all right and now you're free to just keep doing so like if you want to add additional details like you can do some loop cuts i'll s the loop in there you go. You got, you can start adding all kinds of like really small details if you wanted to. You apply a level of subdivision if you need to as well and duplicate it before you do that. So you don't mess up your other one now. Like look at how much mesh we have to work with here. So like if we can add just detail and detail and detail at this point, like little slight differences in shapes and stuff too. So that subdivides now, you'll see. We can really go to town just like flattening surfaces out 
we could do um you know we can do like you know new cuts and insets and things like that and just make things happen basically right i don't think that one looks like good the first one didn't look bad but we want to do paneling as well a lot of times you know creating creating panels off of your topo isn't usually ideal it's better to kind of create paneling that should be the way it should be but it's not impossible to just like you could separate mesh if you wanted to you can extrude it if you want to just use like floaters later on like this might be a possibility you can do things like this as well of course you'd have to go through select let's say all of this and inset that maybe might have to add some loop cuts in areas to kind of keep the edges sharper things like that and then you'll just subdivide it so like you can do a massive amount of detail on this still if you're creating a high poly mesh like it is not the end of the road here on this thing there's just lots and lots you can do and don't use a multi res or don't use a subdivision use a multi res go to sculpt mode you know when you hit control one through five we'll add multi res instead so if we wanted to uh, go ahead and add a multi res if it'll let me i don't know why it's not let me there you go yeah if we want to sculpt on this and like do little chamfers and make it look damaged and um go to town now i've talked about this in my other video when i was kind of showing the little chair idea out that when you create subdivision mesh you, you can just straight work on it you can add a multi-res and sculpt and so like if you need damage and wear and little divots and stuff like in the surface of this like just go for it it's set it's ready to go you know you don't have to you want to sharpen an edge up a little bit maybe you know do that smooth things maybe make it a little bit unevenly smooth who knows maybe there's a little bit of flat spots in here or something try the smooth tool for that oh maybe the scrape tool for that one yeah so if you want to just create like some damage effects in an area go for it yeah so you make this really nice mesh to make it less uh new looking basically right i'm gonna do scrapes we're not quite high enough resolution for scrapes so some low frequency stuff i won't even do on the model that's just one of them um, it's better to do it in substance in my opinion blender is not zbrush so you can't get away with some of these things that you would like to like adding the patterns for like tactile feel of the uh, surface and stuff that's a substance thing that's where you're going to do that Oh, but you, you can keep using all your tools that we used at the start of this as well. So, I mean, if we wanted to go back to the um, the mask tool, right? Make sure we have, let's turn that off for a sec. Okay. And we might want to turn symmetry back on for this one. If we want to add like little divots and things like that, we could use alphas. We could do all kinds of fun stuff like that, right? Like we could use little alphas we can make little seams like where this might have um and like this right we can do that with the sculpt tool or the mask tool excuse me turn symmetry back on i don't know why it turned off but if you can make clean enough lines and that's where that smoothing comes into play if you can make clean enough lines you have a high enough resolution like you could do this all day long you can just trim this thing up make it look super nice it's really hard to get them clean though i'm just going to mention that blender's mask tool here is a little unpredictable sometimes and so you see what happened here so this is because of the pull right the topo shifts too much this is why perfect little squares are really good, but also things like this could come into play. Um, I know for a fact that this is too low res for what I'm trying to do right now. But if you don't know that, you're going to run into a problem with it. So we're at uh, 400,000. I'm not going to push it up any higher because I'm recording, but if I could take this up to like 10 million, I'd be much better off. Because this is just too narrow right now. That's all there is to it. 
this topology got too low res in this area it's too distorted you see that's why those little squares and how you're setting them up the densities of them can be so important super super important let me actually just clear that i'm going to subdivide it i think i'll get away with it hopefully the recording doesn't crash yeah sometimes it'll crash when i do that but let's see a million and yeah it's, it's still going it's pretty good you see much nicer now at a higher resolution so it's a little tricky but you know it's doable if you want to take your time and really finesse your models together you don't have zbrush this is probably your better way of doing it anyways a lot of fun too and uh you can still use projection as well if i can get to a side view here there you go did i rotate this no i did not okay we want to do fall off projected zoom in just enough so that this makes sense again might have to change spacing too but the smoothing tool is a little weird sometimes so we can do that number and then like right here we could do it on the inside or the outside it's really up to us but we might take it and just bring it from the top it's always going to be hardest to do the symmetry section you can bring it down like that maybe single strokes usually better than double in back but i want it thicker All right, let's turn that stabilize off. It's annoying me. Let's curve this out here. I'm gonna smooth it just a tiny bit. So holding shift. You can see it's starting to get slow now on my recording, right? All right, so we won't push it much further or the video will crash or something. But the main thing is that we got this mostly going. Yeah, we got the shapes we need for the most part. It is really picky, so like be very precise with what you're doing. Try not to be overly sharp with the edge, though. And um, you can use mesh filter and inflate, right? This was kind of what I was trying to attempt, I think, at the beginning there. But um, yeah, so you can do stuff like that, clean it up, make it look nicer than that, obviously. But shade everything smooth. Don't forget that. And yeah, have fun, guys. I mean, really. Oops, we have done a bunch of nonsense over here. Have fun with it. Oh, let me show you a secret about this one real quick. When you're using multi res sculpt, you have an eraser, guys. You don't have to live with this. You can just erase it. You see? Let's move that one back out. We did do some sculpting in here, so. But yeah, we can definitely erase this area. And if we want to keep some of it, we could as well, you know? Maybe we like some of it. Just nudge up to it. Okay. You can also do that in areas like this as well. If you ever find the need for it. So on a bake, that'd probably look okay. I don't look too bad. Perfect mesh? No. Perfect sculpt? No. Just well enough, though. Yeah, anyway, so there you go. Um, you know, sky's the limit. Keep playing with the sculpt tools. Try out the multi res sculpting. If you get away with doing more faces, it'll definitely create better results, in my opinion. But yeah, it's um, retopo. Like, this is. This is the thing about topology. I'm not going to use that though. I like it the way it is, but if you go through the process, we'll hide that one that is at the base there. That one too. I'll use this as the thumbnail probably. Something like the top section here. Yeah. So the remesh looks good. 
the subdivision mesh looks just a tiny bit better. And depending on how far you want to work it, I guess it could look a lot better, right? Anyway, so that's going to take us to, we're just over an hour on this one. All right. Usually I try to keep them under an hour, but anyways, if you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And um, I'll check you out in the next one. All right. Take care.